Welcome to another day in the matrix. This is Waters Above. Today's the day, the total lunar eclipse, and we're seeing the crypto market respond exactly how we anticipated, getting rejected into yesterday's daily close, and the overall crypto market struggling to stay above a trillion dollar market cap, while on the other hand, we have the Dow Jones continuing to look strong for the traditional markets. And just a couple days ago, I did a thorough technical analysis run down on the US 30, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, in my weekly Red Pill podcast that I dedicated to this lunar eclipse for episode number 84. So if you're interested in checking that out, it's available now for Patreon supporters at patreon.com slash waters above. I appreciate all of your support. It really means the world to me. In that same podcast, I also covered Zenfin Network and Hex. So if you're interested in me doing TA on other altcoins, that's where you'll be able to find it on my weekly Red Pill podcast over on Patreon. So in today's video, I'm going to share my thoughts on how I see the rest of this week playing out for the overall market. Then we'll be getting into the charts of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP to do some technical analysis on the crypto market. And I'll also be sharing my personal outlook on the global economy, which I get asked about often. So I'll be covering all of that in today's video. So if you're new here, we do cryptocurrency technical analysis and combine it with gematria, numerology, and astrology to understand these markets. Feel free to subscribe and turn the bell notification on to stay updated on when new videos come out. And make sure to give this video a like and share this channel with other conscious beings to help grow our community. And with that being said, let's take the red pill. So we're going to be getting into some dates as we usually do, but I had something shared with me very recently about the Philadelphia Phillies and this recent World Series, which was just concluded a couple days ago. So this was the post. Again, this was sent to me. This is not my post, but... I did cover this a little bit in my recent Red Pill podcast that I was just telling you guys about, but I just wanted to show this post because it was made before the uh, World Series was over. So of course, down here where you see 2022, it says Phillies TBD, and it makes a mention of over the past century that there has been a financial crisis that correlates with the Philadelphia Phillies winning the World Series or just any Philadelphia baseball team. And as you can see, that 1929 year was huge because that's what led to the famous Great Depression. And then we have as well this 2008 um, moment. We called that the housing crisis, subprime mortgage crisis. It was global, but it definitely hit the United States of America very, very hard. Of course, there was global banking scandal going on and uh, Cyprus and Iceland had a huge scandal with banking. We know Uh, Deutsche Bank and what was going on with the United States just watching insolvents and it was pretty incredible time but we knew about this kind of stuff to uh, be expected with this current year because if you take note of all these years you're going to see something in common they are a Shemitah year so we've been talking about this on this channel for over pretty much two years now and This is critical for people to know. It's not just about the World Series team winner. I do believe that is all predetermined, but it also has to deal with the Shemitah. That is the number one most important and critical part of all of this. So the Phillies lost. Um, You're probably well aware of this by now, especially if you're into sports or if you're a sports decoder. I know that not too many sports decoders follow my work, but I believe if you watch my decode that I did on the Los Angeles Rams before the Super Bowl actually happened, we were able to determine who would win that Super Bowl because of that. Now, I didn't even know about the World Series this year. I don't pay attention to sports at all. So this was shared with me uh, by somebody else that I um, actually personally know. So I gave it a moment to kind of decode some of it because of the connections going on here. And I'm going to share a little bit of that with you. But very, very quickly, I just want to show you something with the word Philadelphia Phillies in our Gematria calculator. And this is definitely going to be something that um, maybe many people out there kind of disregarded. But Philadelphia Phillies giving us this 
uh, 349 in a reverse cipher. Now, 349 is actually the 70th prime number. And that matters so much because if you've been following my work over the past year, you'll know that the number 70 has been showing up so much. Well, first and foremost, we have what I mentioned a moment ago, which is the Shemitah. And you could see Shemitah giving you 70 in English ordinal. And you're well aware that the Queen of England, she just passed away, allegedly, on her Platinum Jubilee, which was to celebrate her 70th year as the Queen. And again, this is all happening around the same time. So I think it's interesting how Philadelphia Phillies gives us 349, and 349, of course, being the 70th prime number. And this is all connected, but let's go a little bit deeper. So Philadelphia Phillies, I'm going to go type that in really quickly. To L's. Philadelphia Phillies also giving us this um, 191, and that 191 is the 43rd prime number, and that actually matters a lot because that brings us full circle to what I was just saying before about the Los Angeles Rams and about my last decode that I did for the Super Bowl. So 43 is actually the 14th prime number, and the number 43 and the number 14 were showing up a lot in that Super Bowl decode that I did. It was how we were able to determine who would be winning it alongside just considering that we were in the Chinese year of the tiger. And that tiger connection was giving us negative feelings, negative sentiment. So anything that was tied to the tiger was essentially going to have a very bad year. And that's actually how this year has been playing out. So very quickly, if anyone remembers, the Super Bowl score was 20 to 23 and the the Rams won, and 20 and 23 together is 43, 43 being the 14th prime number, and we know LA Rams giving us 14 in Chaldean. Uh, we know just the word Ram gives you 14, and everything dealing with the number 7. So this is why we saw at the same time frame when that Super Bowl was won that we moved into that Russia-Ukraine conflict because that was moving into March or Aries and Aries being the god of war, right? Mars. And Mars is just ram backwards. So let's keep it moving. One other 43 that's critical to all of this is Rosh Hashanah, giving you 43 in Chaldean. Again, the 14th prime number. So this is all tied in. Remember, during Rosh Hashanah, they blow the ram's horn. It's the shofar. So this was all connected to these numbers and these number sequences. So I'm helping you guys as decoders. When you start to see this all play itself out, you got to use this code to your advantage, especially if you want to get into uh, sports decoding. Okay? So one really interesting thing about today is it is actually 43 days since the Shemitah. So this is the date of Rosh Hashanah. Again, 926 of 2022. Just like I was showing you, Rosh Hashanah is 43. Well, here we are. We are 43 days since. And today is the official day of the eclipse. I mean, it depends really uh, how specific you want to look at it. But I think it's about 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on the 8th of November, which is today. So... Really uh, interesting how this is all playing out because this is connected to the uh, end of the Shemitah, the end of that seven-year cycle. And let me just show you really quickly how we know we have these midterm elections going on in the United States. We're not going to be giving that any of our energy today, but election giving you even 43. We could see that big 33 in Chaldean. And anyone who has a brain that works, you know it's not an election, it's a cell election. This is all predetermined. And it all goes according to a code. So... I am not going to give any of my prana to what happens in these midterm elections or anything that happens in politics, but I'm sharing the code with you guys, and you guys can utilize this code for your interests. That's what this was always about. So one other thing to consider here with this Last World Series and tying the Phillies and the Houston Astros who just won to this uh, kind of concept, this more esoteric concept of financial crisis, we could see that there's a 14-year gap um, since the last... Uh, World Series. Now, they won in 2008. 14 years later is today. And that number 14 was coming back into everything we were just talking about with the number 43 and the number 14. So let's shift this over to something that's really, really interesting. And I, I want to tie this all into a big picture concept. I believe this is going to be pretty mind blowing for people. So speaking of the number 43, as we have, I'm going over to the periodic table right now. It's a technetium. 
And uh, this technetium is the 43rd element on the periodic table derived from the Greek technetos, which means artificial. And this logo right here is a hand showing you that it's artificial because a man created it, because it's made by humans. Now, this all comes back into what we've been talking about with the transhumanism agenda and the agenda of kind of merging consciousness with the artificial realm and however you believe about this it's kind of irrelevant what matters most is just us looking at it from a more esoteric perspective as decoders and seeing where cryptocurrency and blockchain technology fit into all of this because that's the eventual move we're all going to make for the financial system and of course that's something we focus a lot on this channel so just consider where we're at with this technetium and I'm going to show you a deeper decode. So the Houston Astros, their logo is this orange star, okay? Now, again, think about this. We cover astrology on the channel, and that's what this is all about, the Astros astrology. They're giving us symbolism here, and I'll break that down in, in a moment. So orange star giving you this 118, and this is something I shared on my podcast, but I'm going to break it down um, in another way as well, just to give you guys some fresh stuff to consider. So Orange Star is their logo of the winning team, the Houston Astros. And you could see that when I type in Orange Star in the Gamatria calculator, I'm getting 118. And they just won the 118th World Series. And this technetium that I just shared with you a moment ago, it is 118 in Gamatria. Now, this is pretty amazing because I've been sharing for a while how we're in a simulacrum, we're in a matrix, and everything that happens above us, above this firmament dome, is just an optical illusion, and it is ran by tech. So what people think when they speak on astrology, if they're limited in what they're aware of from going back to ancient civilizations with mythologies and etc they're going to be missing out that cr that crucial component that planets are not real they're just luminaries they are dancing lights uh, outside of the firmament and everything is optical illusion as above so below so this is really fascinating where technetium and this word artificial comes into all of this and tying it into this world series and showing you perhaps there's some symbology at play here and you as decoders you working with this stuff is going to really help us to to figure out what's to come next for the world so they're kind of flexing on us with the houston astros winning this and um <laughs> everything that i just shared with you it's pretty pretty amazing I think we're going to start to see more blue and yellow and blue and orange symbolism in our future. We even saw PayPal switch over their logo and their aesthetic over to blue and yellow, just like we saw the Rams won the Super Bowl, the blue and yellow. And the old uh, paradigm was using blue and white for finances. Blue and white is very, very common in anything that does well with the financial system. You know, you have JP Morgan Chase, you have PayPal, uh, Charles Schwab, everything. I mean, American Express, <laughs> it's all blue and white. Even old school PayPal uh, aesthetic was that blue and white. You know, Facebook has the blue and white. The flag of Israel is blue and white. So symbolism is very important, guys. And if you're decoders, you need to be paying attention to the symbols. They speak volumes. So let's keep it moving. Uh, I think that 118 tie into all of this with technetium and the word orange star and, and this coming back to this current 118th World Series and how it did not go the way that some people might have considered. And now you're probably wondering what's going on here. What is Waters Above's take on this? So let me share that with you guys. And it's been something that I've been talking about for now over a year and a half. So this should not be news to any OG wolves in our wolf pack. But just remember that I've been saying that the United States of America would be in a positive position comparatively to everyone else in the Jubilee year. So we're currently in the Jubilee year, the year of 5,783 in the Hebrew calendar, and we will be in this year until September of 2023. So right now, this is the Jubilee 
okay? Jubilee even ties to all of this with 23 in Chaldean. And I made a decode back a while ago on my Patreon. Part one was the Shemitah decoded and part two was Jubilee decoded. They go together. So if you're somebody who wants a refresher on this and you're just joining um, my Patreon membership today, go back and watch that too. That was full of value and lots of esoteric connections. So during the Jubilee year, during the post-Shemitah time frame, the DXY, the U.S. dollar currency index, has a deflationary spike, okay? And that is exactly how it all came to pass. We are seeing the global fiat currencies hit record historic lows. This is something we called out a very long time ago. We are not seeing precious metals do too well during this phase. That's another thing that I called out a very long time ago against what everyone else was saying about how the DXY, the world reserve, would be a horrible currency and a bunch of other currencies would be doing way better and that by now precious metals should be like new all-time highs and all of that. That was just emotional nonsense that had nothing to do with the charts or anyone exposing the power of the year of the Shemitah, specifically the Jubilee cycle, which is seven cycles of seven, comes around every 50 years. And I shared with you how 1972 through 1975, that setup is so similar to what we're experiencing now, just with a much more dramatic economy. And of course, we have technology today in everyone's pockets, so that makes things different. Look at it like a paw prints in the ground you know you could tell the difference between a dog the difference between a bear the difference between a deer and you being able to determine the difference of those could probably save your life so we're just here to expose that yes there are prints in the ground and we need to be able to expose the differences this way we could become better investors more sophisticated investors and hopefully the calm delivery of all this uh, work that i've been sharing with you guys has allowed you to remove that emotional side of all of this that ultimately helping you become a way better investor better business owner better just overall human being so Moving forward, in my outlook and how I see this all going, the Philadelphia Phillies losing was symbolism for the United States of America, losing freedoms so that they could continue to have comfort financially. This is a trade-off. It's a sacrifice. The American people don't even know what's happening right now, but it's just a trade. The freedom for having financial stability. Now, if the Phillies would have won, I think that would have been a sure sign that there would have been financial chaos in the USA while people get to maintain their freedom. But that's irrelevant because when you're poor, when you're broke, when you're going through horrible inflation, you know, you, the last thing you care about is what's going on with, with the freedom. So this, again, is a holistic outlook. If you're from Australia, you're from Nigeria, you're, you're a wolf that's in Denmark right now, and you're like, well, Waters, you're just talking about America. You got to understand that America is a huge part of this whole globalism play. It's part of the whole financial conversation. You need to pay attention to what I'm saying right now, especially if you don't live in America. OK, so what's going on here is a play. And I see the next seven years being prosperous for the United States of America comparatively to everywhere else. So what does this mean for the rest of the world? The USA will remain the strongest economy. Now, you're going to have isolated instances. Perhaps Scandinavia is going to have a much. But we know this already. So, again, there's a lot of countries in this world and we just need to look at this, you know, I can't take a whole video and break this down. It would, it would take me two to three hours. So I'm being a little vague, but I'm trying to be as specific as possible. Okay. So the USA will remain the strongest economy and the USD will continue to be the strongest for the next seven years until the next Shemitah. Then after the next Shemitah, that's when I think the United States is going to go overboard real quick and enter what is a 100 year cycle since 1929 and that's something that's not new to anyone here um, unless you're brand new here I've been talking about this for a long time now okay so the richest people around the world who do not live in America will continue to keep most of their fiat and and their assets in US dollars they're gonna keep most of their wealth in assets, of course, because that's what rich or that's what wealthy people do. But then outside of that, any fiat they have will be predominantly in US dollars, which will make everything I just said become even more noticeable 
And that has been what's been going on. That's why we're seeing record lows in the euro, record lows in the pound. And we're going to continue to see that happen across the board. Now, they will continue to weaken all global currencies, all global fiat currencies to push their CBDC agenda. That's their solution to the problem they're orchestrating. So because they're orchestrating this problem in this fashion, they will need something to blame. They will blame the Fed and the central banks for what they did during the pandemic, which was printing money to infinity. You know, in just the one year around the pandemic starting, the Fed has printed more money than the entire monetary supply going back to them being created in 1913. That's a lot of printing, okay? But they will continue to blame that. And they will continue to blame Russia for the energy crisis, all while they lay out the infrastructure for smart cities and their incoming social score that will be tied to their new CBDC, which will be a digital fiat-like stablecoin. Literally, it'll be fiat-like. <laughs> it'll just be a digital stablecoin that is infinitely printed and it has no value at all. The only value it will have is our belief of its power, just like everything else that deals with money. It only has power because human beings believe in it. So between now and March 2023, there is an opportunity for an event to happen, most likely sooner than later. So most likely very, very soon, especially from the residual, the residual energy from this total lunar eclipse that I've been preparing everyone for for a very long time. So between now and specifically Saturnalia, which will be between December 17th and December 23rd of this year, and into the full moon of January 7th of 2023, that is when I'm anticipating an event to happen. This event I'm speaking of will affect the USA, regardless of what I just said about the USA earlier. Remember, I'm speaking holistically about all of this. The USA will look like it's doing well comparatively to the rest of the world, but overall will still look pretty messy. It'll be a messy situation. And I've said this many times that the DXY, the US dollar currency index, is just the cleanest dirty laundry. It's not like it's a good currency. It's just the best one during this phase of an economic crisis. All right. Please remember everything I'm saying. Take notes. So the USA will look like it's doing well comparatively to the rest of the world, but overall will stay in a pretty awful position, you know, on the individual level and the individuals who are awake and know what I'm saying right now, you'll be able to protect yourself and move accordingly, which is the hope of this of this video. So the event that happens will do what it has always done. It will benefit those who are prepared and the global elite never let a good crisis go to waste. They use events like this as a ritual energy harvesting experiment to collect the data from human behavior. This output is collected by computers, artificial intelligence to feed their algorithm. This combined with astrology is how they use humans as a, as a battery, literally, literally energy slaves. So this is why the wolf pack and what we're doing here, it's so special and it's so rare to have a community where we're like-minded, but we're also focused on our freedom and abundance, regardless of the theater and the narratives going on in the mainstream. So I wanted to say that I wanted to get that out there because I think it was important words to share. All right. So give this video a like, feel free to share that with the world. I think the world needs to hear everything that I just reviewed. So let's move on to what we're seeing right now in the Dow Jones and then get into the cryptos and wrap up our video today. So what we're seeing with the US 30 is clear that we've had a nice rally to the upside. I'd assume RSI, yep, it's starting to uh, give us some signs that were overheated and perhaps we're ready to have a little bit of a correction but you can see right here that i have a fibonacci retrace from this swing high down to this swing low I, i'm not going to get into all of this because i already did it in my last red pill podcast but here we are we're getting into that 786 territory the top of the golden pocket that's kind of where you anticipate things to roll over so I'm going to be keeping track of this, but let's get into the cryptos because I will probably make another Red Pill podcast next week and continue our Dow Jones analysis. I've already actually covered the Dow for the past three podcasts, so it seems like it's being added into our rotation of weekly uh, recap. Now, let's go over to Bitcoin. Definitely a story to be seen here. Here we are with this rejection. I would assume we're about like maybe nine to 10% down from this wick, from wick to wick, exactly almost 10% down. 
getting a little bit of absorption here at the low 19,000 level. I shared with everyone already that once we start breaking below 19,000, specifically on like a five day or a weekly closure, that's when I would anticipate us to come down and fill this wick at like 17.5. But until then, we're kind of just ranging. You know, we've been essentially range bound in this area for 150 days. All right. That's a very, very long time. And that's very similar actually to this move down here where we were just range bound at the selling climax lows of this 2018 cycle. So we have this parabolic advance for Bitcoin where we hit an all-time high and then right around there we call that the buying climax then we had some bull traps along the way and then a break of support which led us into an, a pretty arduous period of time of about 140 days or so before we had an automatic rally a recovery stage now this recovery stage is a fake out because it's not intended to enter price discovery it's intended to trap retail investors specifically getting them to think about the market continuing but in actuality it just wants to trap you again for another retest of lows of supports so when's the best time to get into crypto it's now it's literally now i'm not telling you to invest today i'm telling you to start considering a strategy a dollar cost averaging strategy and that's something that i teach in my crypto mastermind course if you go over to watersabove.com first thing you're going to see is that mastermind course it focuses on crypto specifically for beginners and for people that are more interested in building actual por portfolios for themselves becoming self-sufficient and self-reliant in this market which is something that i want for everyone so i do believe we'll be running a sale this month and if that's something you're interested in definitely let me know in the comments we'll probably be running one later this month so getting back into this i am seeing us being trapped between these levels of about eighteen thousand and about twenty two thousand. and until we see Bit uh, bitcoin start to break above that 20 to seven which is right here september uh <laughs> it's really funny too because i call this the twin towers and we hit this on september 12th and then had the reversal on september 13th which is just like two day window between uh 9 11 uh anywho this is a really interesting setup how until we break above 22.4 on a daily close, we're just kind of range bound. We're sort of trapped. And I do not see Bitcoin going up above 25,000 just yet. That might take some time. That might take until after the end of this year. More than likely, we should have some uh, lows, at least planting in at 18,000 one more time, somewhere around those levels. Returning to 17.5 is a scary endeavor because Bitcoin has not broke below 18,200 on a wick um, since essentially it came down into that low back in mid-June. All right. So if any time we're going to expect a correction, it would be now because of this lunar eclipse. And there's a lot of energy in the market. And once we start seeing it kick in, which I believe it'll be even more noticeable later in the day as we get closer to the exact moment of the eclipse, um, you're going to see it affect the Nasdaq, the S&P and, and the rest of the tech stocks. I mean, just look at this Google chart really, really taking a shit. And uh, Amazon is another great example. This is horrendous. So if you see right here, this is the C19 uh, crash. We are approaching literally the support level range of that time frame. This is what it looks like when the market gives up having the Fed injecting liquidity into it for absolutely no reason. The retail investors don't care about Amazon anymore. Retail investors care about what's super trendy, which is bullshit that's tied to like Elon Musk. And then outside of that, it's cryptocurrency. That's why focusing on crypto right now, specifically the ISO 222 coins and the, the blue chips, like when you focus on those, you're going to do very well over the next four to five years. Patience will be rewarded, not drama and not you being emotional patience is what will reward you and you eventually deciding to self-educate yourself so moving on i think we're ready to see a very volatile move in the market with this four percent move in crypto this is nothing i think we could have a lot more to go so let's look over to our weekly and how that shook out and yep here we are we're essentially just kind of uh, ranging so i'm not really going to say too much about that let's go over to eth 
actually specifically this ETH chart. And we're just going to look at this rejection level and how this all played out. So we have over here this WM pattern deal and this red trend line is beautiful. So I'm going to keep this red trend line in play. You guys know me. I don't mess around with trend lines too much unless they have a lot of value to me. I specifically like to play around with trend lines that are horizontal trading ranges because I'm a Wyckoff investor and Wyckoff is what's helped me achieve success in this market and allowed people that I've taught to achieve success in this market. Meaning if it's not broke, don't fix it. And that methodology is over a century old. It works very, very well, even in crypto to this day. So if we're going to break a daily close below these levels right here on this horizontal line, we're looking at about anything below 1500 on today's daily close. I would anticipate us to move down probably into around 1380 and then into 1360, which is just a tight little range back testing these rejection uh, levels that we got here. So it's essentially a prior resistance that we broke through. That would be the range. And then getting back into this area would be totally fine. If we're going to see Bitcoin break below 18,000, that's when I anticipate this to come back below to $1,000 again. So we have this range to look at somewhere between 1360 and 1240. And that would be a great range for ETH to play around in a little bit more before it decides to make a decision more than likely downside before upside. So with any upside moves, it's until we break above $1,800. If we can't get above 1800, this is just another lower low and this is nothing to throw a party over. So ETH looking fine. Not looking amazing though. Let's get to XRP finally deciding to wake up. It was really just chopping in this level. And I think today is a sign of weakness on XRP. And here we are. We have a lower high planted right there and potentially breaking below the support level with this candle close being below that 44 4 cent level and anything below there on the daily close, I would anticipate gives us a signal to look for 38 cents. That'd be a great level to um, start looking for xrp especially if you consider the move down lower which i just shared on eth i think they're all going to move in harmony all right now this can get really sloppy for xrp xrp tends to return right back to its launch point so if it launches off of this 32 cent level coming right back there is not weird it's just another bart simpson head pattern xrp loves to do them they either do them in really really choppy big trading ranges like you do here bigger ones like you do here or even more smaller tighter ranges like you see here but they're all bart simpson heads this coin loves to do that it's very pumpy dumpy that's why this is a trader's coin Anyone who traded XRP over the last two years actively, you made way more money than just buying and hodling or whatever people say. Now, this isn't to offend anyone. XRP is my second biggest position. So please, this is just a clear pill. It's a red pill, whatever you want to whatever you want to call it. And uh, those truths are hard to swallow. But I've been trading this coin now going on three years, and it's brought me way more prosperity trading it instead of just hodling it. So. With that being said, um, you know, I am looking to accumulate more XRP only if we start to get below 30 cents. And that's another perk that I could discuss about my Discord and the Patreon. Anyone who joins the Patreon memberships, whatever membership you join, patreon.com slash waters above, you will be given access to our Discord. And in the Discord server, I have a text channel called What I'm Buying, What I'm Selling. And that's where I will share whenever I make any buy orders or any sell orders. That's something I'll bring up again, maybe um, at the start of next month, just as a reminder for anyone who's looking to um, join at a later time. But yeah, it's a perk for people who are more interested in when I'm personally making moves. And lately, I've been super patient, not making any moves. I'm just letting this market come to me. So that's the way I like to play this game. When I'm trading, on the other hand, I'm a little more aggressive. So I'm actually going to leave it at that. I shared both downside and upside targets to consider for XRP until we break above 53 cents. There's nothing to sing about. I've been saying that for the past four weeks now, so you should already know this. Um, definitely watch the Red Pill podcast I just put out, episode number 84 on the lunar eclipse packed with information i hope you guys enjoyed today's video it's very spicy i know i went on a little bit of a run before we got into the charts but it was important for me to share those thoughts with everyone 
for you to know where I'm at with things. Again, I'm not biased towards America. I'm just a decoder, and this is what I've decoded. I'm not trying to offend anyone who is not from America. I'm not trying to make you feel like you picked the wrong country to live in. It's none of that. Life is about responding, not reacting. So with anything in life, you should be responding accordingly to your personal situation, where you're at, with your business, with your job, with your family, with your own... Uh, position you know either that be economically mentally consciously spiritually whatever it is you are the only person that could change your life and if you want to change your life you have to change your life it's really that simple so if i had knowledge and wisdom of something i will prepare and play that game accordingly i don't wait around for events to happen i get situated and in position before they happen so Hopefully this inspires people to take action and to be more calm, patient, and just allow this market to do what it does. In my opinion, this is one of the greatest opportunities in investing globally, okay? There is going to be so much opportunity to come in this market over the next three weeks, four weeks. And, and if you're looking at like really what's going on here, the whole next year is going to be an amazing time to be involved and knowledgeable and aware of cryptocurrency and the financial markets. So I'm going to wrap this video up here. I appreciate all of your support. I'm wishing you a beautiful, beautiful day in the matrix. Much love.